Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage, Sarah Millican. to the show. Are you well? Yes! Excellent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My dad's in. No. It was lovely uh, the way I was introduced there. It's a lovely thing to get used to in a job when somebody says your name and people clap and cheer. It's really nice. <laughs> it was a bit weird at the doctor's the other day. Because <laughs> no one fucking clapped. <laughs> Every time I said clap, I think they thought that's what I had. <laughs> But I was having a bit of a faff on Twitter backstage. Give us a cheer if you're on Twitter. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Can be fun. It's also a little bit weird sometimes. Got a message from a fella a few weeks ago. He said, I've got a bit of spare time on me hands and I don't know whether to watch some porn or you. <laughs> that struck me as being quite odd. I don't really know anything about porn, but from what I can gather, it's sort of fantasy, isn't it? Sort of unachievable things. Isn't it? <laughs> Whereas I put myself firmly in the bracket of achievable. <laughs> so that man's fantasy is a middle-aged, slightly overweight woman who just witters on. <laughs> just wander around Asda, there's hundreds of me. <laughs> Look along the end of your sofa, you might well be fucking married to one of me. <laughs> But I live in a flat, I live in a block of flats, and I came out the front door a few months ago and there was just a shoe on the pavement. You've all seen that happen, just a lone shoe. And you just think, eh, I wonder what happened there. <laughs> and then you carry on with your day, which is exactly what I did. But a week goes by and the shoe is still there. It's now joined by a man's shirt. <laughs> a couple of days after that, same shoe, same shirt, pair of man's pants. <laughs> now that is one woman just really slowly dumping her boyfriend. <laughs> Am I going to come out in six weeks' time? There's going to be a big pile of clothes and just a severed cock on the top. <laughs> I mean, I haven't dumped anybody in a while. Is that still how we do it, girls? Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> but I decided about, probably about six months ago now, to try to sort of better myself. And I'm not really bothered about losing weight, but I quite like the idea of getting fit. So I thought I'd get myself an exercise DVD. Now, you know when your partner goes shopping and they say, do you want anything? And they want you to say no, but instead you give them a list. <laughs> I love doing that. Sometimes I just make shit up I don't even need. <laughs> just to say the look on his face. He looks at the list and he goes, what's the difference between a tangerine and a satsuma? <laughs> it's a test. <laughs> So I said, could you get us an exercise DVD, please? Just a basic one, like a, a bog standard, like a beginner's guide. And he said, no problem. And he came home with Davina's Buff Your Abs. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm going to have to lose three stone before I can find me fucking abs. <laughs> so I took her back to the shop and I swapped it for the one that I wanted, which was, you know, just fat lass has a go. <laughs> For the sequel, Fat Last Tries Again. <laughs> and I watched the first few minutes, and you know it's always a celebrity and a trainer, isn't it? Because the celebrity's the one that sells the DVDs, and the trainer's the one that knows what they're doing. <laughs> I watched the first few minutes, they were both laughing at nothing, it was very unnerving. <laughs> and the trainer said to the celebrity, <laughs> Why don't you tell the viewers at home what weight you were when you started this regime? And the celebrity went, <laughs> but I started this regime. <laughs> but I started this regime. I was 10 stone. <laughs> I realized then that I'm aiming for her start weight. <laughs> but my friend said to me, just get some exercise equipment. If you buy it, you've got it at home. You'll use it all the time. And I thought, Bless her cotton socks, she's got no idea, has she? That's not how it works at all, is it? I've got a cross trainer that I've had for three years, I've used it twice, and I've got the feet level so I can put books on them. 
But my friend said, get a treadmill. She said, treadmills are really good. Give us a cheer if you've never owned a treadmill. <laughs> exactly, because we clearly know something that she doesn't, that you can still have the benefits of a treadmill without having to actually buy a treadmill. All you need is some socks and a slippy floor. <laughs> What we'll do is we'll be sitting side by side on the sofa, me and me fella. He'll get up to get something, probably a packet of biscuits. And when he gets up, I just hold on to the back of his pants. <laughs> and he does this for a bit. And then I twang it back into place. He gets some exercise. I get a look at his ass, <laughs> Just like in a proper gym. <laughs> but I like to eat. I don't think it's a fault to enjoy your food. Because you, if you enjoy your food, I sometimes think I might have a tapeworm, but that it's just full. <laughs> oh, yeah. I went into a milkshake shop, and they had uh, on the wall like a menu of all the milkshakes that were on offer. And, uh, and I picked what I thought was clearly the best one, but it had a stupid name, but I thought, well, it's the best one, I'm going to have to ask for it. And the young lad behind the counter clearly knew what was coming, because he's already pissing himself. <laughs> and I built up all my courage, and I went, can I have a large... Can I have a large shake what your mama gave you? <laughs> and my boyfriend, quick as a flash, just went, what, asthma? <laughs> but I had a pie the other day. The other day. I had a pie every day. <laughs> and as I was eating it, I realised I was enjoying the pastry more than the meat. That's quite weird, isn't it? It's like somebody giving you a birthday card and you're keeping the envelope. <laughs> it does make sex a lot easier, though, because if I'm horny and on my own, I just suck a condom. <laughs> oh, that's a bit too much for some of you, isn't it? <laughs> but Severed Cock was champion, was it? <laughs> but I am trying to eat more healthily. I am trying. Uh, I went to the supermarket recently with my friend and uh, we wanted to get some crisps. And... Uh, we wanted to get the proper size bags, you know, not, not like the little ones that you get for when Bane's around. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the proper adult bags, you know, the ones that you've got to empty into a bowl <laughs> that you'd normally mix things in. <laughs> My friend spotted that there was an offer on and she wanted Doritos and I wanted Sensations because I'm a bit posher than she is. And, uh, but the two-for-one offer didn't go across brands, and we were quite sad by that. And she said, you know what we should do? We should just, we should just get two bags of each. <laughs> and I grabbed her hand and I went, you know what? Sometimes you've just got to let these offers go. <laughs> but I, uh, I am trying to eat my healthily. I had an apple. <laughs> Thank you. It's a couple of months ago. Uh, <laughs> I put it in my handbag on an optimistic Monday. And by the Thursday, there weren't any Kit Kats left. <laughs> and I was hungry, and I thought, I'm going to have to find this bloody apple. So I rooted around in my bag, and I found it. It was prematurely bruised and battered, because it had been in my bag for so long. And it had pen on it. <laughs> but I was starving. So I peeled off the clean panty liner, and I ate it. <laughs> were all right. It reminded me of something I hadn't had for years that I really liked, and I was like, what does it remind me of? And I remembered it was toffee apples. <laughs> but I uh, live on my own. Give us a woo if you live on your own. A few of you do. Uh, I, um, I don't, you might not know this if you live on your own. You can still have breakfast in bed. What I do if I fancy breakfast in bed, just before I go to bed, I put a Twix on the bedside cabinet. <laughs> And then when I wake up the next day, as my eyes are focusing, I think, there's a fucking Twix just there! <laughs> but sometimes, there's just a wrapper. <laughs> I've obviously got up for a wee in the night, haven't I? <laughs> Either that or the tooth fairy's moved over to the dark side. <laughs> Have we got single people in tonight? Give us a woo if you're single. We got couples in? More of you, but not as enthusiastic. <laughs> we got a couple at the front. How long have you two been together? 30 years. 30 years. Well, some places that would have got a round of applause. <laughs> Everybody just went, 
Fucking hell. <laughs> it was just a lovely noise, like a... Ooh. Can we see if we could do it again? I've never heard three and a half thousand people do that noise. See if we can do it after three. One, two, three. <laughs> Ooh. 30 years, well done. And we've got quite... You're quite a new couple. How long have you two been together? Four months. Four months. Oh. Oh. Are you clapping that one? <laughs> well done, four months. 30 years, fuck you. I've been with my fella for six years, and it's gone really well. A friend of mine, though, recently fell in love, even more recently than you two. She, they'd, they've been together about a month, and they're adorable. She'd been single for a couple of years, so it means that little bit more to her, you know. And they're so, they're so lovely, they're so adorable, like, to watch, you know. Uh, no, I mean, no, no. I mean when I'm with them. I don't mean like this. She shut her bedroom curtains, what a slag. <laughs> but she said to me that whenever she sees him, she gets sweaty palms. Isn't that lovely? It's adorable, isn't it? Four months together, what other signs of love do you think there are apart from sweaty palms? Give us a suggestion, what do you think? I miss her a lot when I'm not with her. You miss her when you're not with her? Aww. I can't take the piss out of that. <laughs> Two, but I can't. You really miss her. Oh, that's so adorable. And, th and 30 years together, but your palms are bone dry, other flower. <laughs> what are the signs of love? We could clearly learn a lot from 30 years together. It's very, very impressive. What do you reckon? What are the signs of love? A well, kiss before you go to bed. A kiss before you go to bed. If I, if, I get, if I get home and she hasn't changed the lock. If you get home and she hasn't changed the lock. <laughs> balance between you two. You just want to kiss him. He's worried he's never going to see you again. Or any of his things, or CDs, or anything. Just bye. That's, bless you. <laughs> That's weird, but nice. Um, let's open it up to the rest of you guys. What about upstairs? What are the signs of love? Do we think we've got sweaty palms, we've got missing each other, we've got a kiss before bed. Whereabouts was the kiss? Lips. All right, okay, okay. <laughs> Don't. Don't. They're making us say a top or bottom. <sighs> top, that's fine. Uh, and not being locked out. Or, well, forever, permanently. What are the signs of love upstairs, do we think? Toilet door open. <laughs> for... Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> for everything, I just number ones. Oh, <laughs> you just keep the conversation going. So, I mean, I said to him, I said, just give us a minute, love. I'm just going to... Oh, uh. That is... I don't, is that love? That feels... That's gross, is what that is, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Flower. Any other ones from upstairs? Signs of love? <laughs> Did you say depression? <laughs> Where are you? Give us a wave. Are you upstairs? At, up, up, right at the back there, love. Wow, you were louder than me and I've got a microphone. <laughs> are you in a relationship in the minute, Flower? <laughs> Does that mean you're happy at the minute? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds thrilled, doesn't it? Yeah. What are the ones from upstairs? Butterflies. Butterflies is a lovely one. That's really nice. Thank you, Flower. There was, there was a fellow the other day trying to say, but I think he was trying to say butterflies, but he actually said was, sometimes I get a fizzy feeling down below. <laughs> what about downstairs? What are the signs of love, do we think? Say that again. Keeping out of trouble. Mm. Did you get into a lot of trouble pre-relationship, pet? What was that? The, oh, it was a shit relationship. Oh, are they with you tonight? 
Is this the way you break up with somebody? Just <laughs> wait till an appropriate question comes up at a comedy show. <laughs> Been meaning to tell you for ages. It's a shit relationship. <laughs> And we had another answer over here, didn't quite catch it. Did, you, did somebody say chlamydia? <laughs> I've got a present for you, love. <laughs> it's a hospital appointment. <laughs> chlamydia. Any other ones from downstairs? Presents. What was that? Presents? <laughs> Where are you? You money grabbing home? <laughs> Give us a wave, where are you, love? There you are, hello, love. Are you in a relationship at the minute? Yeah. What was the last present you got? Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> what was the last present you got? Jewelry. Jewelry. And what did you have to do for that? <laughs> <laughs> Some things you're ashamed of. <laughs> it's worth it if you get a good bangle, though, isn't it? <laughs> what other signs down here? We haven't had much from over here. What do we reckon? What was that, love? Flowers. Flowers. Nice, very nice. And do you get flowers regularly? No. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd clearly like them, so do something about it, pet. I, uh, I did a home gig um, from a little place called South Shields, and uh, they're all here. Uh, I did a home gig at the beginning of the tour, quite a small venue, it's quite a small place, and, uh, and I had a horrible feeling that I was going to know most of the audience. And sure enough, when I came out in the front row, on the left-hand side was somebody I'd played out with when I was a bane, and on the right, someone I'd fucked. <laughs> and I said, what other signs of love are they? And a lady at the back just shouted out, Throb and Fanny! <laughs> Turns out she was family. Flies. I think that slightly nervous, sort of churny tummy, I think that comes back, doesn't it? At the end of a relationship. You know, when things are petering out. Every time I hear his key in the door, I feel fucking sick. <laughs> but like I say, I've been with my fella for six years, it's gone really well. Um, he bought himself a suit recently, I don't think I've ever seen him in a suit. I quite fancied him in his suit, and I told him, I said, quite fancy you in your suit. And he said, and I quote, it's very smooth, he said, if you like, I'll leave it on and sort you out all good and proper, all posh and that. <laughs> he said, you forgot to say Miss Moneypenny on the end. <laughs> but the only time we ever argue is when it comes to Christmas, birthdays, present giving times, that sort of thing, because he really likes to buy me surprises and I really hate surprises. <laughs> We've got a bit of a happy medium now, though, the last couple of years, where I give him a list of pre-approved surprises. <laughs> Five or six things. He can pick whichever one he likes. I don't know which one it's going to be, so it's still technically a surprise. He came home a few days before my birthday last year, and he said, never guess what I've just done. I said, what have you just done? He said, I've gone off list. <laughs> he said, I'm not even sure if you're going to like it. I said, why the fuck did you buy it, then? <laughs> I mean... Thank you. <laughs> but a friend of mine who doesn't really know us very well, she said, oh, that sounds like an engagement ring to me. I said, no, it sounds like kaplunk. <laughs> but we have quite busy lives, as I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. And when we go on holiday, we like to go somewhere relaxing, somewhere where we can look at nice scenery and, and read books. That's all we really want to do. Uh, my boyfriend doesn't like to fly, so we tend to stay within the UK, and because we don't have to pay for expensive flights, we sometimes treat ourselves to a slightly posher hotel. And the last posh hotel we stayed in had two baths either side of each other, and I thought, oh, we're going to be able to have really romantic baths together without having to stare at hairy toes. <laughs> <laughs> that man puts up with an awful lot with me. <laughs> to be fair, his feet aren't any better. They're not horrific, they're just, you know, feet. 
nails are a bit long, toes are a bit hairy, there's crusty bits on the bottoms, you know the sort of thing. So you look like you could pick up mice with those, they've got a certain sort of owl-like quality to them. But you know, we don't live together, we have a few days a week together and a few days a week apart, and when we're apart and I get to sleep in my own bed, on my own, I fucking love it. <laughs> Starfish! I love it. So we all love our partners, but when you're trying to get to sleep, they all do niggly things, don't they? Like, breathing. <laughs> 30 years together, is there anything about each other when you're trying to get to sleep that's irritating? He snores, does he snore? Gives a chill to people who think that they're a snorer? Yeah. Well, the people who know they're sitting beside a snorer. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of denial in the room tonight. My boyfriend snores. And I found out recently that my dad also snores, because I was whinging to my mum about my boyfriend snoring. And she said, have you tried these? And then slid something across the kitchen bench like it was drugs. Try these. <laughs> and what they were were those nasal strips. I don't know if you've seen them. They're little strips that go across the bridge of the snorer's nose so that they open the nostrils out so that they can breathe more clearly. And in theory, they don't snore anymore. Now, they worked for us for a while until it came to Christmas. Now, something you need to know about me is that I really love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> My boyfriend doesn't like Brussels sprouts, so at Christmas we get a big bag of Brussels sprouts and I eat the lot. And I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty fucking toxic. <laughs> so just before we went to bed on Christmas night, my boyfriend went, do you mind if I don't put the strip on tonight? <laughs> I don't want my nostrils to be any bigger than they have to be. <laughs> Another thing he does, he puts his arm across us, and I feel, I quite like that, because I feel quite sort of safe and protected, I suppose. But then sometimes he puts his leg across, and I think, oh, now we're taking the fucking piss. <laughs> the last time we did it, he put his foot, remember, I described it not that long ago. <laughs> he put his foot on my leg, and he rubbed it up and down. <laughs> And I went, what are you doing? <laughs> and he went, I'm being tender. <laughs> I said, no, love, you're exfoliating. <laughs> but pretty much everything I do work-wise is stand-up comedy related. Can't really do anything else. I've tried acting and I'm shit at it, so I'm just going to leave that to the professionals. And, uh, but a few years ago, my agent said, why don't you go and do a voiceover show reel? So I didn't really know what that was, but I went to the studio. Fella there, lovely fella. He said, we'll get you to do some different voices. We'll put them on a CD. Then you can tout it about, see if you can get some voiceover work. Brilliant. First question he asked, he said, can you do sexy? I said, no. <laughs> and he went, go and have a try. So I had a try and he went, Hmm, you sound like you're dying. <laughs> and then he said, can you do bored? So I tried bored. And he went, actually, that's quite sexy. <laughs> I'm only sexy when I'm bored. <laughs> but I hope to get fucked good and hard in the post office queue. <laughs> but in order to sort of improve my acting skills, I was having a bit of a daft carry on with me fella, and I said, why don't you shout out emotions and I'll see if I can convey them with me face? And he went, okay. So he went, happy, and I went. <laughs> and then he went, sad, and I went. And he went, surprised. And I went, oh. And then there was a long pause as it transpired. He had run out of emotions. <laughs> Until a lovely light bulb moment when his eyes were really wide and he went, like you've just seen a monkey. <laughs> that well-known fourth emotion. <laughs> see each other a few days a week but sometimes if work schedules clash it might be seven or eight days before we see each other again we miss each other of course we do so what we do then is we'll speak on the phone a lot obviously we'll text each other a lot and sometimes we'll send emails to each other with photographs attached not that kind of photograph <laughs> but what you're missing no <laughs> you might think this is quite sad but i think it's quite sweet and I'm slightly wearing my heart on my sleeve even telling you this. The most recent one I sent him was a picture of a sad kitten. And above it I'd written, this is how I feel. Aww. And this was the Friday, and when we seen each other again on the Monday, and he sent back a picture of a happy dog. 
And above it, he'd written, but this is how you'll be on Monday. <laughs> and then I looked properly at the photograph, and the dog had its leg in a cast. <laughs> it went straight from being quite a sweet message to an actual physical threat. <laughs> With six years together, I'm aware it's not a long relationship. We've got a long way to go. Um, but we are finding sort of new, exciting ways to turn each other on, are popping up all the time. And they could pop up in the most unusual of situations. Uh, we were having a carvery. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fucking love a carvery. <laughs> and with his pudding, he got a jug of custard, and he poured the custard onto his pudding. Then he licked the spout of the custard jug, and I was genuinely aroused. <laughs> I just leaned over to him and I went, get in the car. <laughs> Bring the custard. <laughs> but I've always been quite sort of cautious by nature, uh, to the point of being risk averse even. And I get this from my family, my mum, dad and sister are all exactly the same. Like when we were little, we'd go to the fairground, we'd go on the dodgems, and my dad would always insist on driving because he was the only one with a license. <laughs> he would weave expertly in and out of the other cars and then we'd go home, it was properly shit. <laughs> I'm not good at a theme park. I had quite a bad experience at a theme park when I was a teenager. I went to Lightwater Valley. Give us a cheer if you've been to Lightwater Valley. If you haven't, but you've been to Alton Towers, just picture that, but a bit shitter. <laughs> I was about 16 or 17, I went with a friend of mine, we were standing in the queue for The Rat, which is an indoor roller coaster. And we're standing in the queue and I was reading the rules, because I'm all about fun. <laughs> and it had the usual restrictions, it had the height restriction, it had the pregnant restriction, but then it also said if you'd ever had heart problems, you shouldn't go on the ride. And I knew for a fact that the friend that I was with had had heart problems in the past, and I said, Joanne, we're kind of go on, look at that rule, eh? We're kind of go on. And she went, ah, fuck it, let's do it anyway. <laughs> that noise that she made bah. she didn't need to say anything after that because that's the noise equivalent of fuck it isn't it <laughs> bah. you know if you go out on a night out and you drink more than you were expecting to you get up the next day you feel terrible you're bringing up bile but you're pretty sure this bacon sandwich is gonna put a stop to it <laughs> and somebody rings you and says do you fancy go to the pub you always go bah. <laughs> So we go on the ride, I'm not happy about it, but she wants to go on, so we go on the ride. And it's so dark on there that you kind of see your hand in front of your face. And I'm screaming all the way around, like a normal person. <sighs> she was completely silent. <laughs> My first thought was, she's dead. <laughs> My second thought was, our photo is gonna be shit. <laughs> we can all be divided up into people like my friend and people like me. People like my friend, I call them the bumper cars. They're quite exciting to be around. They don't worry about what might happen. They live very much in the moment. So what if I get a couple of bruises? At least I will have had a brilliant time. Give us a cheer all the bumper cars in the room. <laughs> quite a few of you. And then there's people like me. I call us the dodgems. We check doors multiple times. It's not even our house. <laughs> Give us a cheer if you're a dodgem. Nice lady there who's clapping. You're a dodger, are you, Flower? Do you check doors? Do you unplug things? See, would you unplug everything or just certain things? Mainly hair straighteners. Mainly hair straighteners. Oh, good plan. I always unplug my toaster just in case while I'm out it accidentally toasts the air. <laughs> I know a lot of you think I'm an idiot, but there's at least two people in this room tonight going, Can that happen? Can that happen? <laughs> Have I got time to go back now? And have we got anybody in who's done anything really risky? Anybody's done a bungee jump? Yeah, yeah, fella there's done a hello flower. How many bungee jumps have you done? One. <laughs> What's the reason you've only done one? You were drunk. You were drunk when you did a bungee jump? How was that even allowed? In Gran Canaria. Oh, you do that like, oh, it's Gran Canaria. Everybody's pissed there, man. There was a fellow the other day who'd only done the one and I said, what's the reason you've only done one? Thinking it might be because, you know, it's expensive, maybe that was it. And he went, no, no, it's because I shot myself. <laughs> and 
then the next night I had a lady done he didn't want and I thought I better know the answer to this question she said no I didn't shit myself she said I did do a fanny fart all the way down <laughs> but I also had an incredibly cautious lady in the audience recently sitting right in the middle in the front row and she said oh, I'm a, I'm a dodgem and I said example and she said do you check under your bed I said no because I'm not fucking seven she said she'd seen an episode of CSI. Oh yeah, it's all based on fact. <laughs> she'd seen an episode of CSI with the murderer hidden from his victim by hiding underneath the bed. And not in a normal way, but actually clinging to the underside of the bed. And I said, so you were worried about finding a man under your bed? And she went, yeah. And I said, and what would you have done if you had found a man under your bed? She said, I've got no idea, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> There'll be people in this room who don't know which one they are. And the easiest way to tell, this is almost foolproof, little test for you, is uh, you're definitely a dodgem. If when you go away for more than one night, could be a holiday with your family, could be a work stew, could be a stag weekend, a, a girl weekend, anything like that, you take more than the required amount of underwear. <laughs> Give us a cheer if you take spare pants. <laughs> Dodgem's the lot of you. <laughs> so what reasons do you take spare pants? Shout out. Just in case. <laughs> Bit of a slag, are you, pet? <laughs> Any other reasons apart from just in case? In case you shit yourself doing a bungee jump. Well done, Flower. He was listening, he was listening. Good work. Any others? Oh, oh my God. I'm, I feel like I'm on a bus. <laughs> women talking at me either side. Um, there was a lady over here. Say again. In case you're wet yourself. Are you that sort of age? Are you love? Mm. My sister's friend, they were going to do a keep fit class and she said, well, I'll come, but I can't do star jumps anymore. <laughs> oh, go to the loo. What other reasons do we carry spare pants? In case the elastic breaks. Okay, say again. In case the elastic breaks. <laughs> How old are your pants, love? <laughs> oh, are they going up and down a lot, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Any other reasons why we carry spare pants? <laughs> a takeaway? <laughs> Say again? I'm telling everybody else. I think I'm telling them, right? Um, you bought takeaway soup and the container dissolved. <laughs> so you ate them out of your pants. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced that that was soup, love. That might well have... <laughs> Did somebody give you some lovely warm tomato flavoured fucking acid? <laughs> the container dissolved. <laughs> so you ate them out of your pants. There is another reason why ladies carry spare pants, and uh, it's sort of unspoken, isn't it? Um, there's a few women are looking at me like, fucking keep it that way, bitch. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, it's the same reason why I don't really like the warm weather. <laughs> I don't like feeling overly claggy down there. <laughs> Sometimes when the weather's warm, I don't know if I've started a period, I just got a really sweaty arse crack. <laughs> There's a lady the other day said that she carried spare pants case she got lost. <laughs> they said, what if they got a compass on them? <laughs> Which would obviously be called twat nav. <laughs> but I clearly get this cautious nature from my parents. When I was little and I wanted to play out, my mum would say, play out by all means in the back lane. But leave the backyard door open, and every 20 minutes, I want you to come past that backyard door and just give us a little wave so that I know you're all right. And she'd stand at that kitchen window for what seemed like hours just to make sure that I was safe. And I know it's just that if I ever got abducted, I'd never be further than Gateshead. <laughs> it's quite satisfying to say that my parents haven't changed in the intervening 30 years. They came to stay with me a few months ago for the weekend, and on the Sunday night, 
They're packing up the car to go home. And my mum has what she calls her pretty woman bags, which you know, like the cardboard shopping bags as opposed to plastic ones. I'm glad that I know that's what she calls them, because a month before that, I'd been on the phone when she said, E, I've had a proper pretty woman day. And I thought, I hope you've been shopping and not just sucking off businessmen. <laughs> She's retired, she's got a lot of time on her hands. <laughs> but Pretty Woman for me is one of those films. I think we've all got one of those films where even if you've got the DVD, which means technically you could watch it any time you liked, if it's on the telly, you're watching it. <laughs> and that's one of mine, and it was on not too long ago on ITV2 plus one times four. <laughs> and you know that scene, even if you haven't seen the film, you know the classic scene where she goes back into the shop that wouldn't serve her, and she says, you work on commission, big mistake, Huge. And I thought that film would have been totally different if she'd been a size 18, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> I'm a size 18 and pretty much guarantee I couldn't get in any designer clothes. I'd worry about getting stuck in the fucking cubicles, let alone the clothes. <laughs> She'd have gone back in and gone, you work on commission? Well, I've ordered some things online. <laughs> and I don't know if they're going to fit. <laughs> so I bought a handbag to cheer myself up. <laughs> And I filled it with fucking Maltesers. <laughs> so my mum was putting her pretty woman bags in the back seat of the car. My dad said, put them in the boot. And she said, well, I've put them in the back seat. He said, put them in the boot. Well, why can't I just leave them in the back seat? He said, if leave them in the back seat and I've got to slam my brakes on, they'll take the top of your head off. <laughs> and you'll not be able to wear your bonnie dresses that you've just bought because you'll be dead. <laughs> And I looked at my mum and she went, if that happens, the receipts are in the bag, just take them back. <laughs> but I've got a friend who's a, a massive bumper car. It's amazing we get on, our lifestyles are so totally, totally different. We were having a general chat about how you meet potential partners. And I said, because I like to get to know people a little bit first, I said, I don't think I've ever kissed a man about whom I didn't know his GCSE results. <laughs> you may mock, but it's a very good way of filtering out all of the over 40s with their fucking O-levels. <laughs> is that true? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh my God. He said, I've had sex with people I haven't even seen. <laughs> well, my friend has what I think is a dangerous lifestyle. He thinks it's exciting, but I think it's dangerous. Uh, for me, exciting is when you start a new tea towel. <gasps> I love it. It's been in the cupboard. It's all clean. It's got no bean juice on it. Fucking love it. <laughs> But my friend's lifestyle is dangerous. He, um, he takes drugs on a regular basis. I drink three pints of shandy a year. I can't even drink properly, let alone take drugs. Gives a cheer if you've never taken drugs in your life. <laughs> There's loads of us. See, my friend was telling me about this proper night that he'd had this proper night. He was listing all of these drugs. And I didn't know anything about drugs, but I was pretending to, to look cool. <laughs> and as he was listening, I was going, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh aha. -huh. Oh, that one's smashing. The reason I don't know anything about drugs is because Zamo said, say no. <laughs> it's a very age-specific joke, that one. It's a lot of people under 30 going, who the fuck is Zamo? <laughs> Google him, you might learn something. <laughs> so my friend's story is getting increasingly more boastful and a horrible feeling that I was going to have to match it at the end with a similar story. And he ended his story by saying, oh my God, my friends were texting me the next day saying, you've got no idea what shit you got up to last night. It was brilliant. And then he went like this. Like it was my turn. <laughs> I was thinking, what on earth am I going to say? So I had to think and I went, sometimes, oh fuck. Sometimes I eat strepsils when I've run out of sweets. <laughs> I'm not proud. <laughs> but then my friend starts telling me about his sexual exploits and he said he'd had sex on a kitchen sink. He said, have you ever had sex on a kitchen sink? And I wanted to tell him that I thought it sounded incredibly unhygienic. <laughs> but I didn't, I just went, no. <laughs> and I got home and I thought, am I a prude? I don't think I am a prude, but maybe I am. So I said to my boyfriend, <laughs> would you like to have sex on a kitchen sink? I get the impression it's supposed to be a bit more in the moment, you know, rather than like when you've done those dishes, get your ass on there. <laughs> because we're very well matched, my boyfriend said, why would I want to have sex on a kitchen sink? That'd be like eating your dinner out of a shoe. 
Then my friend said he'd had sex on a plane. He said, have you ever had sex on a plane? I said, I've not had sex on a sink and that's in me flat. What do you reckon? <laughs> and he said, I've had sex on a plane. He said, that's dangerous. That's exciting. I said, well, I suppose it is. But I think having a massive shit with a queue outside on a plane is more dangerous. <laughs> And I've definitely done that. <laughs> and from the clapping, I can tell I'm not the only one. We're all members of the Pile High Club. I've always been quite a late developer. Like, you know when you first find out about the birds and the bees, where babies come from? Give us a cheer if you found out via family. Via friends? Yeah. Still quite a lot of you unaccounted for. <laughs> Did you just not know? <laughs> Did anybody find out via a book? Yeah. What book was it? The, was it? Was it The Joy of Sex? <laughs> Did you flick through it with your mum? Did you? I've done that with your dad. I've done that with your dad. There was a fellow the other day said he'd, used, he'd, he'd found out about sex via a book and I said, what book was it? And he said, well, I say a book, it was more of a magazine. <laughs> Some of you might recognise this. This is The Body Book by Claire Rayner. <laughs> recognise it? Yeah, excellent. And uh, I've kept it all these years. Just to refer back to, really. <laughs> like when my boyfriend's trying to make us do something I don't really want to do. I just flick through and go, that hole is not mentioned in here at all. <laughs> if Claire Rayner doesn't approve, then neither do I. <laughs> but this book refers to the, um... Vagina. <laughs> it refers to the... Vagina. <laughs> The baby making hole. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Awful. Now, I've got a big problem with it being called the baby making hole, largely because I don't have kids, I don't want kids, I don't really like kids. I'm sure you've got them, and I'm sure they're smashing, but I'm glad you've left them at home where they fucking belong. <laughs> was recently having to child-proof the house and I, I totally picked up the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> I thought it was made so the little buggers can't get in or if they do get in, they come to harm. So I did a bit of research and it turns out advice on how to child-proof your house is advice on how to do the opposite as well. Example, three foot of electrical cable is enough to endanger a toddler's life. That's good to know. <laughs> It also recommended that you teach your children how to respond to fire, which sounded like a fun game. <laughs> so I reckon a combination of the following things is enough to keep the little shits out of my house. Uh, forks in front of every socket. Ah. <laughs> Multicoloured beakers filled with bleach. <laughs> and bonny sparkly things at the bottom of your pond. <laughs> Ooh, splash. <laughs> what childproofing means to me. A friend of mine had a baby girl recently and I wanted to buy a present because it's a nice thing to do, isn't it? Well, I don't know what you're supposed to buy babies, but a different friend who has adult children, she said, oh, there's only one rule, you buy her something to grow into. That's the rule. So I bought her a bra. <laughs> just given this book and was told about sex by my family and when I say a family I mean you know like your mum I don't mean like a special uncle <laughs> but when I was little I was quite creative but incredibly shy and I used to write poems and stories and the only way I could perform them aloud was to do so from behind a curtain <laughs> just accept it it's my childhood <laughs> so I'd stand behind a curtain and read me poem aloud, hoping that my family were still in the room. <laughs> and if I was a good girl, I got a banana. So when I came to finding out about sex, my mum said, do you want to go behind the curtain? <laughs> and I thought, if she gives us a banana at the end of this, that'll just be really weird. <laughs> but you know, the next 
next stage of sex advice, the next stage when you find out that it's not just for making babies, you know, that it's also for making money. <laughs> Getting your own way, that sort of thing. My mum gave me one line of advice and one line only. She said, remember, you don't have to put anything in your mouth. You don't want to. <laughs> then she made me eat broccoli, which felt like double standards. <laughs> not just about sex and our stuff in about how our bodies change in particular how our bodies change as we get older and I want to read a little bit to you if I may it says after many many years long after their children are grown up people who are old get tired all over <laughs> their hearts get tired of beating like a drum their muscles get tired of storing up work their brains get tired of thinking and feeling. <laughs> the time has come for the old person to die. <laughs> and the next line is, so they do. <laughs> but what horrifies me is just before that, there's a section all about naps. <laughs> I love a nap. I've got a horrible feeling that I'm a paragraph above death. <laughs> but I, uh, I turned 36 last year, and for the first time ever, and I've no idea why it's popped up now and hadn't popped up before now, but for the first time ever, I feel sexy. I've never felt sexy before. I think it's because I feel like I'm in control of things. I feel quite confident. Uh, Figure-wise, I feel quite womanly. I think I'm aware of my flaws, and I've accepted them. And anybody who doesn't can fuck off. <laughs> so I had to go and get my eyes tested. Um, yeah, it'd be quite attractive, but I get these fuckers checked out. <laughs> I've been wearing glasses for 30 years, and the last time I had them checked, she said, um, you need some new lenses. And I thought, I'll treat myself to some new frames. I'll treat myself. And I got these ones. I don't know if you all see them at the back and upstairs. They're sort of a half frame. And I got them primarily because they look a little bit headmistressy, don't they? <laughs> and I thought, wouldn't it be good to have glasses that you could wear in the bedroom? Because if you don't wear your glasses in the bedroom, you can't see what you're tugging, can you? <laughs> so I've been trying to think of said headmistressy things that I could say that might help the mood, you know. And I've come up with two. And I thought before I tried them out on my boyfriend, maybe I could try them out on you a lot, if that's all right. <laughs> so this is the first one, see what you think of this. I do like the idea that I can forewarn my boyfriend that I'm about to be sexy just by moving me glasses. <laughs> Brace yourself, pet. <laughs> so this is the first headmistressy thing, see what you think of this. If you finish that book, I'll give you a toffee penny. Okay, there are pockets of people that like that one. Not everybody does. That's fine. That's fine. This is the other one. See if you like this one. Go and get some sand. Brian's been sick in the hall. <laughs> that one seemed to work. Good. No, thanks for your input. I'll try that out on him tonight. <laughs> But I am getting much better at dirty talk. I used to be rubbish at it. Um, I've just had a bit more practice, that's all it is. I still mostly stick to the classics. Uh, and I mean, I mean, no, I mean the things people always say. I don't mean like Charles Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best of times. <laughs> it was the worst of times. <laughs> But I've been ad libbing lately and I've come up with a new one and I sort of want to share it with you because you're such a nice crowd. Now, I don't mind you using it. That's why I'm telling you, we could all do with an extra line in the bedroom, couldn't we? Um, but do us a favour, like if you see me at an orgy, just remember it's my fucking line, okay? Well, to be fair, you're unlikely to ever see me at an orgy because I've only got a flat and I think you've got to have a house, haven't you? I'm not really very well equipped for having a lot of people around. I've already got four mugs. <laughs> There's certain things I wouldn't want to have to explain away to me landlord. I don't know who spunk that is in the carpet. 
It's not mine. Somebody must have trodden it in. So this is the line. I feel quite nervous now because I have genuinely said this during sex. I feel like I want to stand behind the curtain. <laughs> now I'm going to say it, but I need to sort of... I kind of need to get myself in the moment, you know? Just, just bear with us a tick. That's all it'll take. Um. taller than he actually is. <laughs> it's like I'm shaking his fucking hand. <laughs> and the line is this. Get it in, get it in. I've shaved everything. Don't waste it. <laughs> Write it down. Um, it's another good one. If they're trying to do foreplay on you, but you're going to miss your train. <laughs> Just shout, stop faffing. It's very effective, very effective. <laughs> but I, uh, I tried to start a new euphemism recently. I don't know if you've ever tried to start a new euphemism. It's quite tricky. This one's not going particularly well. I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, the euphemism is this. I see there's some leftover pie in the fridge. <laughs> which is a euphemism for cunnilingus. <laughs> there was a few people are explaining cunnilingus to each other. <laughs> I was trying to think of a mime that I could do, but the only one I could think of was this. <laughs> but I see there's some leftover pie in the fridge doesn't really work with my fella, because he's generally a very hungry man. <laughs> As soon as he realises that there's no actual pie in the fridge, a light goes out in his eyes. <laughs> I did the show in, in Stockton, and there was a lady at the front said, I use that euphemism, and I thought, you bugger, it's spreading like wildfire. <laughs> she said she's put her own sort of spin on it. She says, I see there's some leftover corned beef pie in the fridge. <laughs> no, no, no. If I'm ever going to refer to me nunny as a foodstuff, it's not going to be corned beef. <laughs> Probably something like Arctic Roll. <laughs> Call to the touch with a bit of old cake round. <laughs> I can't quite work it if I've turned you off Arctic Roll or just my vagina. <laughs> I've got a friend. Uh, actually, she's not a friend. Yeah, she's sort of a friend of a friend. I'm sure we all have these people. You know, you, you wouldn't invite her to your house, but you don't want her to die. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? She's always got dirty nails, and I've got a big problem with dirty nails. Unless she has a manual job, which she doesn't. She works in a fucking office. There's no reason to have dirty nails. And every time I see her, the only way I can smooth it out in my mind is by thinking, oh, she's obviously been buried alive again. <laughs> but she said to me, will you take a sexy underwear shopping? And I thought, oh, God, I've seen her nails. So I said to her, OK, I said, now, do you want to go to, like, Marks and Spencer's, you know? They do sexy stuff, shut up! <laughs> I'm never sexier than when I'm comfy. <laughs> or do you want to go to, like, a proper sort of Ann Summers type place? And she went, oh, I don't want to go there. I certainly don't want a peep-toe bra. <laughs> I know they're low, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> I told you I live in a, I live in a flat. I, uh, I rent my flat. I'm hoping in the next 12 months to maybe get myself on the property ladder. I've been looking on those 
online house hunting websites. But to be honest, I've been looking on those for years, ever since somebody told me I can look around people's houses without having to be their friend. <laughs> I saw one recently that had a drawing room, and I was thinking, I don't even know what you're supposed to do in a drawing room. And then I wondered if it was the same as when I was a bane, and there was only one room in the house that we're allowed to do glitter in. <laughs> me and my sister, when we were little, we used to make calendars. We'd get an old calendar, we'd cut it up, we'd put one of the pictures on a bit of cardboard, cover it in glitter, and then put a sticky calendar on the bottom. And, uh, and there was one year that it was an animal calendar that we were using. It had funny animal pictures and sort of funny animal quips underneath. And my mum came over to where we were gluing, and she went, see that one there? And I went, uh-huh. She went, don't give that one to your nana. And I went, okay. And I asked her recently, I said, can I remember what that picture was of? She said, yes, I remember very well. She said, it was a raccoon clinging onto a branch. And underneath it said, I'm barely hanging on as it is. <laughs> family traditions. I don't think they have to be anything big or expensive. I think they can just be daft things that you always do. Me and my fella, every year we buy a new board game, every year, but I refuse to buy the proper ones because they're really expensive. So we just go to Asda and get their equivalent, <laughs> which are remarkably similar. We've got three. If I tell you the names of them, see if you can guess and shout out which one you think it's imitating. So the first one is called Surgery. Operation. Operation, that's right. Second one is called, who is it? The third one, which is my favourite, is called Who Did It and In What Room? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, oh, bless Monopoly, bless you. <laughs> Too late and wrong. <laughs> because I'm quite security conscious, that's always at the forefront of my mind when I'm looking at flats and houses. And I know what I really want, I think it's just like a fob entry system because they look quite secure. And I know that's just an electric gate, but I keep accidentally calling it an electric fence. <laughs> what I really want is somewhere that's got an electric fence. <laughs> Let me see Phil and Kirsty sort that out for us. Broadmoor. <laughs> or Jurassic Park. <laughs> but something I probably should have pointed out before now that you might have noticed is that I really love swearing. Um, oh, you've noticed, that's good. <laughs> Because I can't swear when I'm on the radio or the telly, so I have to make up for it elsewhere, like on stage and sometimes in top shop. <laughs> well, I can't get a tit in any of the clothes. <laughs> I don't know what your local branch is like, but mine has a floor that's just accessories, as if they've gone, you're too fat for our clothes, have yourself a scarf. <laughs> The last time I was in, uh, I was, this is the kind of jewellery that I like, sort of elastic plastic, kind of that sort of thing, quite cheap and cheerful. And I was trying something much, very similar to this one, and um, I couldn't get it past my knuckles. And the friend that I was with, she went, oh my God, you're like an actual giant. <laughs> Fuck off. Do we like swearing? Does Chiffy like swearing? <laughs> Anybody doesn't really like swearing? <laughs> ah, fuck off. No. <laughs> I particularly like the word cunt. Um, oh, well, that separates the men from the boys, doesn't it? Well, I like swearing, but not that one. No, it's fair enough. I've got a friend who doesn't like the word. She said, we don't use that word in our house. We don't like that word in our house. We call that, see you next Tuesday. Have you heard this, that people call it this? Which really pisses me off. Because technically that would be S-Y-N-T. So not only is she scared of swearing, she's also fucking illiterate. <laughs> But she said, how would you like that word just shouted at you? And I said, sort of depends what's happening at the time. <laughs> Somebody's got a chicken with them. I've got a friend who's a doctor, she's a brilliant woman, and uh, we were having one of those lovely catch-up chats, you know when you haven't seen a friend in ages, and you've got the kettles constantly on, and you're putting the world to rights, it was one of those, and it was lovely. And we ended up talking, I don't know how we got onto this subject, but we ended up talking about how much toilet roll we use. <laughs> I think I'd been bragging. <laughs> and my boyfriend's round at mine, we can rattle through a nine-pack in a week. <laughs> and she said to me, you're using too much. <laughs> I went, what? Is there like a shortage? And she went, no, but you're using too much. And then she went, dry, wet, dry. I said, what? 
dry, wet, dry. Dry, use a bit of toilet roll. Wet, one of those moist toilet tissues. I don't know what that mime is. <laughs> That's scary because I'm quite clearly doing somebody else's arse, aren't I? <laughs> though isn't it <laughs> so that's wet and then pat it dry with a bit of toilet roll and I said you know what I'm 36 I've been doing this a long time how about I just stick to my usual way and she said and I hope this is how she talks to her patients she said your arsehole will fall off <laughs> but you know there are those times when you run out of toilet roll and obviously the worst time to run out of toilet roll is when you really fucking need some toilet roll <laughs> Give us a cheer if you've ever used something else because you had to. Yeah. Oh, quite a lot of you. What kind of things have you used? Shout out. A sock. <laughs> Who's that? Give us a wave. Where are you, love? There you are. Happy as bloody Larry they aren't you? Okay, so you used a sock. Um, did, you, did you do it like that? Ever glove puppet. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> so well done, pet. What else have we used? Shout out. <laughs> what was a, sh a what was that? <laughs> a shower head. <laughs> oh my god. Did you have to like? <laughs> oh, did you have? Did you have to pour your cheeks? <laughs> oh my God! Was that in your own shower? <laughs> was it in your own shower? Yes. Oh, that's all right then. Good. <laughs> just, I didn't know. Oh, no, it was just at my friends. Oh, he's here. Oh, oh hi, I didn't tell you about this, did I? <laughs> so we've got a sock and a shower head. What are they? Spare, 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 spare pants. Somebody who said spare pants. <laughs> Somebody here, that's a good answer. It's another good reason to carry spare pants. What was the fellow over here? Sandpaper. Sandpaper. <laughs> Do we believe him? No. <laughs> no. Is it. What was that, love? You were on the beach. And the, what? And that's where. I know that's where sand comes from, but. I don't know if there are many DIY places on the beach. Oh, you know that beach that's got all those B&Qs? <laughs> Any other things we've used? Your hand. <laughs> Any others? What was that? Your boss's performance review. <laughs> High five, fella. Well done. Excellent, excellent work. <laughs> it was a lady the other day, and I used the term lady as loosely as it's possible to use it. Said that she had used a sandwich. <laughs> I don't know about you, love, but I can't eat Nutella anymore. <laughs> you told me yours, I'll tell you mine. When it happened to me, I was in my flat, and I thought, I'm sort of thinking about the other rooms, visualising the other rooms, thinking, what on earth could I use? Never been posh enough for kitchen roll, but I've always had tissues in. But I had run out of tissues at the same time, and I was like, it's sods low. What on earth can I use? And then I remembered that I'd recently treated myself to some flash wipes. <laughs> Yes, it stung. <laughs> yes, it was very lemony. It was also the cleanest I've ever felt. <laughs> and to be fair, the advert does say that they're for stubborn rings. So. <laughs> but I did a show in Belfast and a fella shouted out an answer, but I couldn't quite. He sort of, it was just a noise because he had such a strong accent. I could just make out a noise. I just heard, wah, wah. That's all I heard, wah, wah. And I said, but you wiped your ass on a werewolf, did you, love? <laughs> Turned out what he actually used was wire wool. <laughs> I'd rather take me chances with a fucking werewolf. <laughs> but I told you that I'm cautious. I'm a driver. I think I'm a good driver. I'm quite a sensible driver. 
I never do anything reckless behind the wheel. Um, but you know, sometimes we're put in positions where we have to behave differently to our personalities. And I had one of those in about September last year. Uh, I was working in Oxford. I finished work at about 11 p.m. And I got a phone call. And it was one of those phone calls that none of us want, but some of us get. And it was a phone call to say that my mom had been rushed into hospital and I need to get home as quickly as possible. Now, the journey time from where I was to where they were was about a five and a half hour drive. And I was now stressed and incredibly worried about my mum, but there's no alternative. Sometimes you just have to get in the car, don't you? And I got in the car. The first part of the journey were quite sort of twisty, turny roads, kind of country lanes. And you know, if you're familiar with those, if you're local, you take those at the speed limit, don't you? Because you know the bends that are coming up. But I'm generally going everywhere once, so I always pull back a little bit on those roads. Don't get us wrong, like on the streets, I was flooring it. Sometimes doing 72. <laughs> it's all about me, ma'am. Fuck the law. <laughs> but on the twisty, turny bits, it was scary. It was a very narrow road. There were ditches either side. It was obviously pitch black. And cars were coming at me in the opposite direction around these bends at a hell of a rate. And it was genuinely terrifying. And it was on one of those bends that I hit and killed a deer. Now, I'm a massive animal lover and was horrified by what I'd done and still am. And driving at night is still not particularly any fun. And as soon as it happened, I thought, I, have to, I must have to ring somebody. This feels like maybe I need to file a report. Maybe, maybe this is even a criminal matter. So I thought, when I get home, I'm going to have to look into this. And sure enough, when I got home, it was 5 a.m. My mum wasn't doing too badly. They'd sent her home from hospital. They gave her some tablets. She seemed to be responding. And they sent her home. And I thought, now is my chance. Now that things have calmed down, I'm going to have to look into this. So I did what we all do in situations like that. If you're proud of yourself, you ask your dad, don't you? If you're not proud of yourself, you ask Google. <laughs> so I typed into Google, what happens if I kill a, and just left it blank out of curiosity to see what the top answers were. <laughs> top one was a Pokemon character. Second one was a bird of prey, something in a similar situation to myself. Third one, what happens if I kill a policeman? <laughs> and as it happens, because it doesn't technically belong to anybody, it's not actually criminal. Though I did double check with a policeman friend of mine because I wanted to make sure I was going through the right protocol. But also because I had a sneaking suspicion I was going to tell you lot. <laughs> and if it had been criminal, I probably would have kept it really fucking quiet. <laughs> but back to when it happened, back to being in the car, as soon as it happened, I rang my boyfriend hands-free, not an idiot, and, uh, and I was upset. I was in a state of shock. I was crying a lot. And I think it's a testament to how good your relationship is as to whether your partner can sort you out in those situations. He's a very calm man, my fella, and I'm, I get stressed and tense quite a lot. And he's very good at sort of bringing me down and making me see reason. And I thought, well, he's pretty much got his work cut out for him tonight because I still had a four-and-a-half-hour drive ahead. And at that point, we didn't know what I was getting home to. And I said to him, I can't believe I just killed a deer. And he went, oh, babes, I've killed loads of things. <laughs> no, that, is this the beginning of a massive confession? <laughs> you know how you thought your nana was ill? <laughs> I've never been a rule breaker or a law breaker. If somebody tells me I can't do something, I just don't do it. It's what I've always been like. like my sister reminded me recently, she said, remember, we were never allowed space dust. Do you remember space dust? Yeah. Never allowed it, because my mum thought it was drugs. That's <laughs> what all the veins are getting into these days. They're all getting hooked. I'm sure she thought it was a gateway drug to dib dabs and fountains. <laughs> but my dad said, you've had it now, haven't you? And I went, no. And he went, but you're in your 30s. And I went, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> But I had quite a girly relationship with my mum when I was little. Like, if she got new makeup or new clothes, she'd always show me. Every single time she bought new perfume, she'd always say, do you want to smell of me new perfume? And I'd go, yes, please. And I'd go over to where she was. She'd bend down because I was only little. She'd pull her top to one side, and I would inhale. And every single time, she'd done a massive fart. <laughs> she never told me. For years, that's what I thought Chanel Number no. 5 smelled like. <laughs> At best, it's Chanel number two. <laughs> but my sister, she likes to buy me little presents every now and again. You know, sort of, she always says, I saw this and I thought of you. And they're never, you know, they're not big and expensive. They're just daft little things that she's seen. The most recent one was a pillbox. I saw this and I thought of you. And it's a Mr. Man pillbox to show children that tablets can be fun. <laughs> 
the Mr. Man of Choice is actually Little Miss Late. <laughs> Finally, somewhere for all of my morning after pills. <laughs> but we had a chat recently, maybe ma'am, she's got a friend who's quite a bit younger than her who's on the contraceptive injection. And uh, what you've had, I don't like the idea of the contraceptive injection because when I was on the pill, I, did, I had a lot of bother with it, so it was quite nice to be able to come off it straight away with the injections, a bit more complicated. It was a very sensible conversation, it was a very female conversation that my dad chose to interject. <laughs> Put his paper down and he went, You should never mess with Mother Nature. Went, never mess with Mother Nature. You can talk with your metal hips. <laughs> My dad's a very friendly man. He likes to talk to people. He likes to talk to everybody. He likes to know people's names. He's the sort of person in a shop who will read all of the name badges. So if we go in a shop, he gets his change off the lid and the till. He goes, thanks very much. Jean. <laughs> We're just glad that he stopped staring at an old lady's tit. <laughs> We got a train last year from London up to Newcastle, me and my sister, my mum and dad, managed to get a table on the train, awesome work. And we got really cheap first class tickets because we booked them when I was about nine. <laughs> and the lady got on the train and sat across from us on her own and my dad was instantly sort of itching to talk to a strange at must chat. <laughs> and they did have a very minor conversation. My dad said something like, it's not that cold down here, is it? And the lady said, no, it's much warmer than it is up north. That was it. That was the extent of the conversation, yet my dad still saw fit in 10 minutes' time when the woman removed her cardigan to go... Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. <laughs> my dad has a mobile phone. He's, uh, he's getting on, he's nearly 70, he's got a mobile phone, and it's mostly for incoming, so me and my sister can text him to see we're all right, or we can ring him if we need him. He's not really bothered about texting out. He finds it a lot of faff. He doesn't really have the patience anymore. So to make his life easier, and fuck knows who taught him how to do this, <laughs> he set himself a template text. <laughs> which he sends out regardless of the situation. <laughs> and the template text says, Champion, love dad. Regardless of whether I've won an award or been shitting myself all night, champion, love dad. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a question that I could ask him where that would be a really good answer. Like, and the only one I can come up with is, Dad, what was the name of the Wonder Horse on the telly in the 80s? <laughs> but it was about this time last year that I was worried about my family. Um, my mum and dad are both retired and both disabled. And I was worried about them sort of thinking before they put the heating on. You know, it was a very cold winter. Sort of thinking, can we afford it before they put the heating on? And I said, you know what, you've looked after me all these years, including the two, I moved back in after I got divorced. Never have kids, because I never properly fucking leave. <laughs> so maybe I could start giving you a bit of a hand. Maybe I could start paying your heating bill. Not happy, not happy. Very proud people, my parents. There was a lot of sort of wrestling went on. I mean, verbal. I wanted to have my dad on the floor. <laughs> out hips willy-nilly <laughs> and uh, they eventually agreed they still weren't happy about it but they agreed as the most sensible option started to pay for the heating bill a month later I went to visit them my dad opened the front door and he was just wearing vest and pants <laughs> and I went dad it's three in the afternoon why haven't you got any clothes on it's boiling in there <laughs> sister shout from the kitchen, we've never even been on holiday anywhere this hot. <laughs> but we had a very good upbringing, we always had loads of, we had loads of pets, we had loads of pets. Can you see if you've got a pet? Yeah. I'm very jealous, I'd love to have a pet. I don't have that kind of lifestyle, I'm away from home too much and it would be cruel. So me and my fellow, when we've got a bit of time off, like an afternoon off, we like to go to zoos and aquariums. But you can't always do that, because those places are expensive and they take up a lot of time. So we have perfected the art of wandering round pets at home. <laughs> You've got to go in with a lot of confidence, you know. Like you could totally own a fish, you know. <laughs> to be fair, I sometimes wander around baby clothes shops and I haven't got a baby, that's a lot weirder. <laughs> I can pass as a new mum because I've got a bit of a belly and I always look knackered. 
and if I think anybody's suspicious, I just lob a boob out. <laughs> that doesn't work in pets at home. <laughs> so the last time we were in pets at home, they had a special section to one side of animals that had been reduced. Just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> reduced. It was one of the saddest things I think I've ever seen. They had a big rabbit in a hutch, much bigger than the other sort of sexy rabbits. <laughs> sexy is not the right word, is it? <laughs> Depends on the rabbit. <laughs> Thank you. And the big rabbit, to make it that little bit more heartbreaking, they'd written a sign for it in the first person. And the sign said, Hi, I'm Honey. I'm a little bit bigger than the other rabbits. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than the other rabbits. Please take me home. I thought you never expect to come face to face with a rabbit equivalent of your teenage self. I didn't buy it. It's got to learn. Well, we had loads of pets when we were kids. We had rabbits and budgies and hamsters and fish and dogs. We had loads of things, but whenever they died, we were never told that. We were just told some story instead, some lie. Anybody else have this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What lies were you told? Shout out. Oh. Gone to a farm. What animal was it, love? Oh. A dog. Oh, it's still in your voice, isn't it, Flower? Dog. <laughs> farm. Dog. Can't talk anymore. There was a lady the other day, she said, uh, My rabbit never died. I said, What? My rabbit never died. It's just sometimes a different colour. And occasionally it was a guinea pig. <laughs> Any others apart from the dog on the farm? Snail what was that, love? Snail Your snail ran away. <laughs> Snail's not a pet, love. <laughs> but did it have a name? No. no. <laughs> That's why it ran away, Flower. <laughs> you didn't give a shit. Any others? Swam down, down the toilet. I take it it was a fish, was it, love? <laughs> yes? yes? Yeah, it was a... Oh, bless you. Yes. <laughs> Went for a holiday in the lavvy. Oh. There was a lady the other day, um, she said that she'd had a, a, a goldfish and when it had died, she'd been told that it swam away out of the bowl. While I was talking to her, but a chat broke out at the other side of the audience, and I thought, I better see what's going on over here. So I finished with a lady whose fish had swam away out of the bone, and I looked across here and I said, What's going on? And over here was a lady in her 50s, another lady in her 70s, uh, potentially mother and daughter. And I said, What's happening? What had happened? The lady in her 50s had gone, Hey, that's a shame, isn't it? That that lady was lied to about her fish swimming away. Because <laughs> my fish actually swam away, didn't it, ma'am? <laughs> And the old lady was pissing herself laughing. <laughs> but we had the farm one. We were told gone to live on a farm to keep an old man company. When it happened to our dog, we were gutted. When it happened to me, Nana, we were thrilled. <laughs> but my favourite one was a young Geordie lad when I did the Edinburgh Festival last year. He said he'd had terrapins and he'd been told they'd left to join the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I think my cautious nature is a, I think it's a control issue. I think I'm a bit of a control freak. I think that's what it sort of boils down to. I like to be in charge of all areas of my life. And as I get older, I realize maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe I need to calm down. Maybe I need to let other people do things for me. Maybe I need to be a little bit more spontaneous. Maybe I need to worry a little bit less about my back door, you know? Well, that sounds terrible. No, no. <laughs> At least you know it's clean though, don't you? <laughs> and I could do a bungee jump. But, you know, for me, it's all about small steps and trying not to shit myself. <laughs> so I have some space dust in my pocket. Give us a wave if you've done this. What do I do, what do, I do love? Just put it in, that's it. Can I just do a little bit? Put it all in, like you bastards. <laughs> all of it. We've paid my money, put it all in. Okay. Any more tips? <laughs> Don't tell your mum. <laughs> I want if you don't flower. Okay, let's do it. Come. What was that, love? Hold it in my mouth. Hold it in my mouth. That was worth shouting out twice, wasn't it, flower? 
Okay, let's do it like, can we do clap, clap, clap? by the <laughs> It's nearly gone. I've never been I've never been so happy about swallowing in my whole life. Probably do it more often if it tasted like that. I wonder if you could combine the two. <laughs> I'm nearly there. Give us a minute. confess that I have done this each night on tour. My mum's right, I'm fucking hooked. <laughs> oh, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much for coming. Um, let me leave you with one final thing. Um, some people think the reason that I'm cautious is that I'm scared, that I'm sort of scared of life and that's why I, I pull back and I disagree entirely. I love life, I embrace life, I just want it to last as long as possible and I think that's fairly reasonable, isn't it? I used to think that premature death was the worst thing. Nobody wants to go before that time, but I don't know if it is the worst thing anymore. I was in my car about six months ago, driving along, had the radio on, and on the radio came a news report. And on the news report, a policeman said that a body had been found, a female body, and it had been found in suspicious circumstances. It was horrible, of course it was. And at the end of the report, he said that there were definitely no sexual motives. And I thought, if there's one thing worse than being found dead, it's if they look at your body and go... I'd have trimmed that if I were her. You've been lovely. Thank you very much for coming. Good night. a little thing and then you can all go home and take your bras off uh, and do your belts. I don't forget about the men. I'm going to tell you another one of my euphemisms, if that's all right. Um, let's see if we can get this into common usage, if possible. Um, there's a specific scenario for this euphemism. You know when you really need a poo? But for whatever reason, you can't go. It's the wrong time or the wrong place. You're going to have to hold it in maybe for five minutes, maybe for six hours, whatever. <laughs> then when you're ten minutes away from a place or a time when you can... Offload. <laughs> Your body knows, doesn't it? And it begins the countdown. <laughs> Which in my case is an almost constant stream of farts. <laughs> this is where you join the scene. I'd been on trains and in meetings all day. I burst through my front door, just wanted to go on my own toilet. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? 
boyfriend was in the living room. He came out in the hallway and he went, how's your day been, love? <laughs> and I needed to very quickly tell him that we weren't going to be chatting straight away. <laughs> So I said, I'm sorry, love. I can't talk right now. The trailers have started. <laughs> It'll be lovely. Thank you very much for coming. Good night. You say. Thank you.